In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create this exact spread in online design. There are 20 steps to make this spread look exactly like what you're seeing here on your screen. And you should have a copy of this PDF. It is in the files that you were sent or that you will find on our Frontier Yearbook Team website. And just in case um, you're not looking at the PDF exactly like this in a two-page view, if you, depending on which ver version of Acrobat or Adobe Reader you have, um, somewhere either in view or display, you will see um, something that says two-page view, and you just want to make sure that you're on two-page view that way you can see both at the same time. So let's switch over to online design and let's just start by going to a blank spread. For, this, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and use this spread um, to start with, but I will clear everything off here. That way we can see how it starts from the beginning. What I suggest doing is going down here and changing this to 25% for just a moment so that you can zoom out and see everything and just drag your mouse over the entire spread and you'll see that everything is selected. And just go ahead and move this on over. Um, that way it's not in your way anymore. And then you can always go right back down here, fit to window, and now you just see your spread. To get your page set up how mine is right now, there are a couple of things that we want to do. First, you should make sure that you have the correct fonts installed. And to do that, you need to do that from the ladder. And there is another tutorial that I have called Creating Consistency in Online Design that explains specifically how to accomplish this for both the text and for the colors. So just make sure that you've added in at least this AWPC Kiefer. Also make sure that your photos are uploaded into online design. The next thing we want to do is go up to View, Page Settings. Now you want to make sure that your units are picas and your nudge should be at 0 0.1. Margins are going to just leave there in the default. I changed my columns to zero just because we're focusing on how to design with, design with the grid in this example. Make sure that you have all three of these boxes checked and the snap to distance can stay at four. And um, I didn't change the type tool default because we're going to work with character styles. So go ahead and press save and your spread should look identical to mine as it is. Now, let me explain a few things on here. You've got the selection tool, type tool, shape tool, straight path tool, curved path tool, and this hand tool um, allows you to move around on the page, uh, and then the magnifying glass simply zooms in, or you can actually draw a square or rectangle and then it will zoom directly into a specific area, okay? And just like before, to get back to the desired view, you can use this bottom control down here. Um, the next thing I wanna point out is if, uh, you've got your save, undo, redo, cut, copy, and paste. And you have X, Y coordinates and width and height numbers, and we're gonna be working with that a lot. If you are following along with the step-by-step -step process um, and, and reading along with that, you'll notice that we have already completed steps one through three. Step number four is to actually create the boxes that the pictures will be in. And to do that, what I've suggested is to go ahead and just make eight boxes that um, are approximately in the spot of each picture. You want to make sure on each of these that you don't have any kind of border um, because there, there's not supposed to be a border with these. So I'm just going to, you know, kind of eyeball this a little bit and draw a box there. 
one over here. And you can also actually with this one selected just hit copy, paste, so that you're, you don't have to keep do undoing that order every time. There, one here. Photo here. And we'll also need one more that goes over here for the caption. And I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Now, this doesn't quite look like this, but it's, you know, it, it's kind of close. It, <laughs> it has the eight boxes that we needed to draw. So now what we need to do to get these boxes in the exact places that they belong, um, go back over to online design here, and I'm going to click on the dominant photo. Now, you remember I mentioned this X and Y and the width and height. In the steps, I listed for you the exact dimensions and the exact XY coordinate location for each of these objects. Now, something to point out is that it, the spacing is going to be um, even. Everything's going to be on a whole number. So when you create these, none of these should really be on uh, something like this where it's negative 51.7. Um, it should be as close to a whole number as possible on almost all of these. The exception would be the height of the text boxes because those are, um, the, the, the height of those can vary, whereas the width is going to be the same on every one of our captions throughout the spread. So if you look at the chart and the attached instructions, step number four has uh, all eight of these listed. So if we just type these in as they are, the dominant is negative 52, the y coordinate of negative uh, one, and the width is supposed to be 68 picas, and the height is supposed to be 44. Okay, now, that is exactly where it's supposed to be. If you look back at your PDF, you'll notice that it's exactly the same dimensions and exactly the same place. So we're going to continue to follow along that chart for each of these eight boxes. Okay, for um, refreshing, which was this top one up here, uh, it's an x coordinate of 18, y coordinate of 5 and a width of 31 and a width of 23. Okay. This one, which was squirt, is 18, 29, 14, 10. This one is wings, it's 33, and 29, and a width of 16, and you guessed it, a height of 10, because the one next to it also had a height of 10. This one down here has an x coordinate of two, a y coordinate of 48, oops, y coordinate of 48, and a width of 15, and a height of 12. One next to it, 18, 48, 18, and 12.
and the very last one which is just that for that quote box is supposed to be at 37 and y is 48 and a width of 12 and also a height of 12 okay and then there is this other box up here for the text and it's supposed to be negative uh, 49 width is 15 y coordinate is 2.6 and height of 4 and I'm just going to leave that border on it for now that way we can see where it's at so it doesn't get lost in this um, gray square. So, and don't forget to save periodically. And now all of these boxes are exactly where they're supposed to be, which was very easy to do. Take note that there are two spaces between this photo and this set of photos because this set of photos is not directly related to this dominant photo. You'll notice that these three are only one space apart and that's because those are related but they're not related to the dominant photo and they're not related to this other package. The spacing is key to the consistency and flow of every single spread and to help the reader understand what belongs with what. Now we begin with step five. Step five is to simply go find the appropriate pictures that belong on the spread and then put those into each appropriate box. Now, you don't want to put in the dominant photo just yet because we have not edited that dominant photo so that it fits um, the spread exactly. And and that's okay, well, we're gonna come back to that. I believe this is right here. Here. It's here. Okay. So now what we need to do is double click into each of these. I'm going to start with this one because it's the most obvious here. And I'm going to reposition this red bounding box so that what I would like to appear on this spread is inside that red box. So if I go ahead and move it like that and click apply, now it has repositioned the photo and resized it so that it looks like what I intended it to look like. and that one happens to be. These particular photos are pretty much the right size for, for each of these, um, except that one, really. Also, this one is not correct because it needs to be like that. There we go. Now it, it moved down where it was supposed to be. So if yours was, if it looked like it was up higher, you need to make sure that you double click in here and move this red box so that there's no white space underneath of it. Should be something like that. Okay. I'm going to save. The next step is to cut out this top part like we have on the spread. So if you'll notice here, we've got a straight line and then um, the rest of this is cut out. So to cut this image out, what we want to do is double click on it and go to the clipping path. Now, if you remember, I had um, basically a straight line through here. So what we want to do is go to move a single point at a time and actually move this, make sure it's, it stays straight, and then move it down to where you like it. Okay, and now we're, we want to add points. 
around here so that we can move this line to follow the cutout. So I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And I'm just going to go right over here and I'm going to click add points. Okay. So Um, now, we need to move these points. So this one right here is there basically because that's that's showing us where we're going to start. That might even be a little bit too much there. So we're just going to move it. And now we're going to move all the rest of these wherever you, you know, think they should go. And you can always come back and change how this looks later on. So even if on your first try you didn't get it very, very good, that's okay. You can always go back and edit it. And it doesn't look like I put enough points here, so. Great, so now we have our cutout. And you can see here, it, it's not too great up here, and you can go back in and add points in and, and curve that out a little bit and make it look a little nicer. But for right now, we're gonna leave that. Let's go ahead and save. And you'll notice we still have this blue area in here. Well, you know, it didn't let us cut that out when we were in there. So what we need to do now is go over here to this squiggly line tool. And I'm first going to go ahead and actually zoom in to this area so we can really get a good look at it. And then go to the squiggly line tool and start anywhere you'd like. I'm just going to start down here so that I can make sure I get this straight. And then just like you did with the clipping path, you want to just go ahead and trace the area. exactly what we did with the clipping path, nothing different. Okay, and whenever you're done, once you've connected it, hit finish. And we want to get rid of that border by going to border and clicking none. And we want to change the fill to white. And voila, it's cut out. Now, same thing here. If like we missed some area here, if you double click on it and you want to zoom in, you can then go ahead and move any of those points just like we did before. So if we think this needs to go in a little bit, then we can move that, no problem, and hit apply, and you can see it, it moved it in. Or you could always redraw it, whatever you felt like doing there. Hit to window. There we go, that looks pretty good. So we are finished all the way through step number eight. Step number nine will get us started on the text boxes. If we look back at our spread, we'll notice that we have several text boxes that we need to create. Let's first start with the titles and show you how to edit that. So go to the text tool, which is the T that's right here, and let's draw a spot that we think Let's Splash will fit in. And just go ahead and type that. and we need to just select the first word because they're in two different fonts here. So just select let's. On the follow along directions, you'll notice that I indicated let's was in Helvetica 48. So it's already in Helvetica. Let's change that to 48. Oh, I believe that was bold too. And then let's change splash to Kiefer 80. So we need to go and find font Kiefer, and you'll notice that it doesn't have an 80 in there, so just type in 80. Okay, and now it seems to have disappeared. Well, it really didn't. You'll notice there's this little plus sign here, which means there's still more, so we just need to resize the box. And when we resize it so that it fits in there, 
um, then you can see it. So just move it into place and of course we need to actually change the color too. So this splash was a green color and let's was yellow. Okay, it's about right. Okay, so let's make this other one. It says from color to black and white and just a dash of color. And we'll make another text box. Once you type that in, make sure you change the font size. It should be at size 21. And now what we need to do in order to give it this outline and the gradient look, we need to go up to Object while this text box is selected. Object, Convert Text to Shape. The next thing that we need to do is go to Effects and click on Gradient. You can see it automatically gave it this um, black to white gradient, but we wanted to do green to yellow, sort of give it that reverse of what was down here. So click green, and then in the second box there, click yellow, and all that's left is a border. So if you go into border, and we just want a real thin border, so 0.25, which is one of the presets there, will give you that headline. And that looks, that's exactly what we were looking for. And the next headline was over here. So we're gonna do another text box. Then type in in a flash. This was in the same font, this Kiefer, and increase that. Not sure exactly. Yeah, that looks about right. But there, if you remember, there was a drop shadow behind that. Now that you have your text in there, go up here to the effects palette and click drop shadow. Then go in and change the color of the shadow to green. And you'll notice that it is now green. And I believe I increased the um, opacity a little bit so it was a little bit brighter. And you can even change the distance, how far, you know, which is basically how far away that is. And I kind of like it at four. And you could change the angle and everything, but I like it like that. And that takes care of the titles on the page.